Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC Australia card, or UFC Sydney card, from a betting perspective. And for those of you that are watching this for the first time, we take a very contrarian approach to all things wagering, actually. Uh, what we're going to attempt to do is figure out where the public is, where the biases are, where the kind of fake narratives are. In other words, what results are just way too justified by logic and reason such that the entire uh, MMA com betting community has just converged on these binary outcomes in a sport which is ripe with chaos um, and basically fade those. Um, this is a, a video series which is, yes, designed to help you win in MMA, but more important to teach you how to uh, analyze situations like this much more critically and not just try to out analyze the entire betting community but to just step back and get a sense for what part of a line has been driven more by narrative what part of a line is driven more by biases and to figure out which of those we're supposed to be faded um so let's just go over the rules here once again uh, we bet every single fight we bet one thing every fight and obviously that's not the greatest money management system in the world we don't care uh, we're going to be betting the same amount every fight. That's going to be one unit. And for me, that's 180, 10 times high. Very, very lucky. Um, again, that's not the greatest money management system in the world either. But again, we don't care. Um, this is more of an exercise to kind of get you, you know, make everybody just kind of sharper. Um, and if we win money, great. And it turns out that we are, we have been doing pretty well. But more to the point, we're kind of building good, good, good habits for when you uh, bet other things like this, anything where, where there's a VIG that is that, you know, you, you're not just getting even odds. You have to make up for that separation somewhere. And the idea is that to, to get some practice analyzing which part of all these bets are just kind of kind of overvalued, which of these are just driven by these just very easy stories that people tend to tell. And, you know, you, you'll become a better I think you'll become a better investor in everything if you kind of start approaching things in this way. I've been doing it this way for a long time in many disciplines. And uh, it also is a lot more fun to play this way instead of playing along with what everybody else is playing. Okay. Um, so uh, let's just get into it. Uh, ooh, the one thing I keep forgetting to mention is that we have 12 fights. What we always do is for the main event, to reserve the main event to get all our money back. Because, you know, listen, we're probably being contrarian. We're setting ourselves up to go 0 and 11. So the, the last fight, we're always going to be betting something that's going to be at least, I guess, 11 to 1 or whatever it requires to get our money back. All right, so let's just get started here. We have Kevin Gissette versus Keeper Crosby. This is probably the one I'm least confident in. And when I say that, uh, it means that I'm least confident that there is one big bias. Um, I've seen a lot of different, you know, there have been... I was expecting more people to be on the Jusette side, but during the course of the week, just a lot of steam and a lot of, I would say love, but a lot of, a lot of opinions have been coming in on the Crosby side. And one thing that has been sort of agreed upon is that Crosby's kind of bring the heat a little bit more. He's going to be the more aggressive fighter. Um, so what I'm taking from that is what's the lines, which are probably a little bit too juiced is maybe Crosby inside the distance might be a little bit overvalued just because that's what people are kind of suggesting. He's going to be bringing more of the heat. Um, and again, because like most of the money and most of the love has been kind of, you know, wavering this way towards the, the uh, Crosby side, we are just going to take the, the Jusette side inside the distance. Again, this is the, the least contrarian. It's the least, it's the fight where I'm least confident that I know where the public is. Okay. So we're just going to, Again, just to follow the rules, you are going to bet one thing every fight. We're just going to play Jusette inside the distance. So let's take a look. Jusette, uh inside the distance, uh, plus 140. That's like a terrible price. So you know what? It's such a bad price. It's probably good. Okay. Um, moving on, we have – wait, can we put this in yet? We are putting this in. Oh, we could do this right away. That's pretty good, actually. Um, let's keep it in the bet slip. Can we do that? Okay. 
We have Shane Young versus Gabriel Miranda. And this one, everybody's 100% sure what's going to happen. Okay, so Gabriel Moran is incredibly aggressive. He's the kind of guy that goes for it. But Shane Young is just, and Shane Young is kind of terrible, okay? So we have two kind of like really, really bad fighters. And the idea is that if Gabriel Miranda does not get him out of there early, Shane Young is going to take over late and either win, you know, a late stoppage or a decision. So those are the things that you can't bet. You can't bet Shane Young by decision. You can't really even bet him round three, okay? Um, and you certainly cannot bet Gabriel Miranda in round one, okay? Because that is where his entire win condition is, is agreed upon. So the only thing you can really do here is play Shane Young early, round one or two, um, or Gabriel Miranda maybe by decision. So let's just take a look and see what these lines are. The Gabriel Miranda by decision one is pretty, seems pretty juicy to me. Gabriel Miranda by decision is plus 650. And on the other hand, let's look at the Shane Young kind of like round one thing. Shane Young it, it, by TK on round one is only 450. Uh, that's not going to be good enough for me. So we're going to play Gabriel Miranda to get these takedowns and win by decision at plus 650. That has just literally no chance to. Um, we are going to put in stake all singles. That's going to be how we remember. Okay. We'll take this one out because we're already in there. Actually, we just bet this right now. So Gabriel Miranda win by decision, plus 180. And there we go. All right, moving on. We have uh, Blood Diamond versus Charlie Radke. Um, okay. So Blood Diamond is basically only there to – because uh, – what's his name? Because – Sorry about that. And he's only here because uh, Israel Adesanya is on the card. Uh, not to mention the fact that that we have a pretty violent style problem here for him because he's really, really poor with his takedowns. And Charlie Radke, he just loves to get this fight to the mat. So essentially, there's very little way that Blood Diamond can win. Um, so we're going to take a shot. Blood Diamond plus 260. For 180. Blood Diamond plus 260 for 180. Um, all right, moving on, we have Nazrat Hasparas versus Landon Quinones. So Nazrat Hasparas, I mean, he just he's he's definitely the rightful favorite, but he's just kind of low volume. He's a real kind of a boring fighter. He really doesn't have a lot of decisions, uh, excuse me, a lot of finish equity here. Um, and he's basically just going to cruise to a decision. As a matter of fact, you know, Quinones does have some takedowns, so it's certainly going to be like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem a real action-packed fight. Everybody's kind of in agreement with this. So we are going to take Hasparas inside the distance here. Um, let's just see what he is. Hasparas inside the distance, probably, what are you going to get, like plus 130 or something like that? Probably not a big deal, but I don't know if anybody's playing this. I mean, it's just such an such an obvious result that he's going to go to decision. So Hasparas inside the distance plus one thirty for one eighty. Okay. All right, we have Jamie Malarkey versus John McDessie. So McDessie is, you know, he's he's kind of old, you know, and Malarkey he has. He's more of a grinder, and he's probably going to just essentially, once again, he's going to kind of grind McDessie into, I would say, into submission, but kind of grind him against the cage, win the decision. Um, so these are the things we just can't bet. But you can't bet, you can't bet Malarkey by decision. You can't bet McDessie by decision either. You have to bet something inside the distance here. Okay. Now, so what we could do, we could either just bet the fight inside the distance. Or we could pick our favorite round for Malarkey. So let's take a look and see what the Malarkey like specific round props are. Let's see. Malarkey round two plus 750. That's that seems like a lot of fun to me. So we're gonna do that one. Malarkey round two plus 750. 
people. I, I hope you guys are really going to stick with me for the main event because we really are going to go 0-11. But at the very least, we are be, um, we're going to be on the opposite side of the chalk. We're going to be the opposite side of the, of, the, of the narratives, which is all we're trying to do here. All right, this next fight kind of confuses me. All right. And, and every, 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 I don't know, every card, the entire community likes to throw in terms like recency bias without even knowing exactly what it means. And we hit a good example of that last week where nobody wanted to play, not nobody, but Benoit Saint Denis, people were afraid to play him because they thought there was recency bias that people played him at plus 200. That why should they play him like minus 180 or something like that? It's not the way recency bias actually works, you know. And I've also heard th these types of logic, this type of logic. They said, I said, well, if he had not, if he had not lost those last three fights, what were his odds have been here? Well, he did lose his last three fights. I mean, like, yeah, there's a reason why odds change. And even though, you know, sometimes they change too much, we have to go on something with past results to to predict future performance uh, to some degree. But nonetheless, I mean, this fight is is very, very confusing to me. And I'm probably a sucker on this one. But listen, Jose Mariscal Chepe, he was my freaking hero in, in Jacksonville. He was it was that it was a fight against Trevor Peak where I would say it was a pick 'em fight. And I would say 90 percent of the of the of the Twitter, Twitter, speak, the Twitter geniuses, the MMA touts or whatever, they were all over Trevor Peak. They were saying that, well, one day we'll fade Trevor P, but it can't be this week. He's just, you know, he's going to run over Mariscal. Mariscal is going to be, he was uh, there on short notice up a weight class. And yet the line was only like plus 130 or something like that. That was a classic, perfect trap line. And we bet him and he was freaking, he was our hero. He basically 15 minutes, well, not 15, because they eventually ran out of gas, but he brought the heat, fought for your money, all that stuff. And... He was, he's fighting Jack Jenkins, who from that same card won a terrible decision. I mean, he was he was beaten pretty clearly, I think, by Jamal Emmers. And yet they gave it to Jenkins in Emmers' home state, which was so shocking to me. So I just figured that this that that when these two fought each other, that everybody would be all over Mariscal, you know, but I can't find anybody who's betting this guy. So I don't quite understand it. I don't quite get it, and this is probably the sucker bet. But I'm going. I'm going to play Mariscal. This is this is uh, this is. I'm, I'm probably an idiot for saying this. Just looks too easy. So Mariscal for 180. Um, I probably should just play him inside the distance if you want to know the truth, because I don't see, I don't see a way that he wins the decision. You know, this is going to be a high octane performance by him if he's going to win but then again he didn't finish trevor peak either boy oh boy is it too greedy to play him inside the distance but you know what let's winning method mariscal inside the distance plus 500 do i have it in me yeah screw it mariscal inside the distance Plus 500. Let's go. I just, I'm a sucker. What can I tell you? I'm recency biased, can I say? All right, moving on. We have Carlos Olberg versus Da Woon Young. Um, there was a tiny little bit of MMA math that I was afraid was going to come into this fight, but it really didn't. You have Carlos Olberg, who has been doing well recently, but he he lost to Kennedy and, and Kennedy N. That's the best I can describe this. Um, and Da Woon Jung actually beat Kennedy N. So I was I was afraid that Da Woon Jung was going to get some MMA math, but no one's really brought this up. It's essentially the fact that Carlos Olberg is now just the better the better kickboxer. He's probably going to get him out of there in the first round, and Da Woon Jung really doesn't have too much to offer, and that's pretty much the narrative that's been relied upon. So. What we cannot bet is essentially anything with Carlos Olberg in round one or round two. The only thing we can really bet here is either Olberg by decision or Da Woon Jung uh, straight up. So, and the thing about Da Woon Jung straight up is that's going to probably involve a um, a knockout as well. 
So let's take a look and see what some of these odds are. I think Oberg by decision is probably the most more responsible play here. Let's take a look. Carlos Oberg by decision plus 400. That's pretty, it's pretty juicy if you want to know the truth. Um, let's look at some of these later rounds, though. Um, Oberg round two plus 450. Boy, oh boy. We're not betting in round one. That's that's not gonna happen. Oberg round two plus 450 or Oberg by decision. I don't know. It's got to be Oberg by decision. That's just, that's just got to be the one that no one's playing. Oberg round, Oberg by decision plus 180. All right. Um, Tyson Pedro versus Anton Turkali. So it took a while before the public really figured out what was going to happen here. Um, I'm surprised because even though there's literally like hundreds of thousands of ways this fight could go, it took until probably yesterday, but everybody finally agreed what's going to happen. Either Tyson Pedro gets him out of there in round one, or Tyson Pedro runs out of gas and Anton Charkali takes over and wins either round two or three or by decision. So those are the things we can't bet. So nice and easy. We're going to either take Turkali early or Pedro probably by decision or even Pedro round three. But let's take a look at some of these lines here. This is, it took a while, as I said, but they finally agreed of exactly what was going to happen. Oh, Pedro by decision plus 450. Let's leg kick our way into a victory. Oh, let's go. Are you kidding me? All right, moving on. And this is why I don't do these things till Friday. Like if I if I analyze where the public was on Tuesday, I would I would have no idea. But after a while, everybody just kind of just listens to each other and everybody feeds off of each other's takes and everybody just kind of agrees that there are only two ways a fight can go. And so we know which ways that you know we're not allowed to bet. Justin Taffa versus Austin Lane. We did this analysis. Um for the last time these guys fought, which was again at that Jacksonville card. And this one is, is I love this one because in Jacksonville, Taffa was on the road. You know, he was traveling to all the way to Jacksonville and Austin Lane was at home because he used to play for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And they fought for about 30 seconds and Taffa got poked in the eye. And now they're coming to Australia where Taffa has the home court advantage and Austin Lane is going to be outside of his element. Not only that, but Taffa is going to get his revenge for getting poked in the eye in front of his home fans. Easy money. So we're taking Austin. Austin Lane plus 170 or 180. Okay, so it's going to have to... Uh, it's going to have to wait until I log off because it just detected draftings. I'm using Zoom and they don't like that when I use Zoom. So I'm going to have to enter the rest of these when I, uh, after we uh, log off. And to give you an example, so you know who we bet in this fight back in Jacksonville? We bet Taffa round two. Because back then, the, you know, we weren't hearing about this revenge narrative. We weren't hearing about the moving to Australia. It was a whole different thing. Back then, it was the idea was that either Tapa finishes in round one or Austin Lane takes over late. So that's why we play Tapa round two. Here, the, the public is on something completely different. Okay, they're just convinced that Tapa is winning. So uh, Austin Lane plus the one seventy, no round or nothing like that. Nice and easy. Um, Manel Cop versus Felipe Dos Santos. Well, Felipe Dos Santos is obviously really exciting, but Manel Cop essentially hasn't covered everywhere, you know, and, and, and uh, Felipe Dos Santos is going to make him look good. You know, he's going to bring the heat, but Cop is just going to get him out of there probably in the first round, at the very most in the second. So, you know what we can do? Well, we can't bet Cop. We can't bet. Well, we can't bet Cop round one. Probably can't bet him round two. The only thing we can bet here, honestly, is either Dos Santos on the money line or cop by decision. So let's see what these lines are. Cop by decision 
is plus 350, or DeSantos himself is plus 300. Um, I don't know, you don't think DeSantos can kind of hang in there for, for 15 minutes? Probably not. So what we're going to do, we are going to take DeSantos, but we are really going to just go for the throat here because he is going to bring the heat just for just something to do. We are, well, actually we can't really play. Yeah, we can. DeSantos inside the distance plus 600. Let's go. I know. I know what you guys are saying. Cheech, you're just freaking out of your mind. It's not that I'm out of my mind. It's that he's plus 600. He's plus, first of all, he's plus 300. And there's been not a single, a single person who's predicted him to win. And not even that there hasn't been a single person predicting him to win. There hasn't even been someone who said that he's a good line at plus 300. The only thing people have been saying is that he's excited. The only thing that makes this kind of a weird bet is that fact. Am I, am I supposed to just bet Felipe de Santos by decision? I mean, and just take the 300. Do I have to be greedy and take the plus 600? Because I think people would agree that if, in fact, de Santos won, it would probably be inside the distance. So maybe I'm just supposed to take the Santos plus the 300. How is he going to win a decision? I don't know, but that is what I'm going to do, actually. So let's go back, and we're just going to play the Santos plus the 300 for 180. Hey, you also get the uh, DQ, right? By uh, Just in case. All right. Um, moving on. What do you have? One more? Uh, one, we have the co-main event and the main event. So we have Tai Tuivasa versus Alexander Volkov. Um, everybody, everybody really loves playing Tai Tuivasa. Um, but it's more as though people like saying they're going to play Tai Tuivasa. But at the end of the day, you look at Volkov and 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 people are just kind of agreeing that he's just going to win. And and that's not the I don't know, I don't understand exactly what that means, you know. So so this is a weird fight as far as from as far as what the public is 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 perceiving. There's only two sides of this that has not really been considered. One is the idea that Volkov can actually get Tuivasa out of there in the first round. Okay. People are saying that Volkov probably is going to just outpoint him and probably win a decision. Or Tuivasa probably, you know, gets him out of there somehow in round one or two. So I really think the only things you could play here are Volkov round one or Tuivasa by decision. And I, I'm pretty sure that Tuivasa by decision is going to be incredibly juicy. Let's take a look at them. So Volkov round one, let's look at that one first. Uh, well, by specifically by TKO round one is only 225. Tai Tuivasa by decision is plus 1,000. Okay. It's good to me. Let me tell you something. Get, get me a close fight with home cooking at 10 to one, sounds good to me. And I'm gonna be the only one on this. All right, so we are really just asking for trouble. We have made just literally some of the worst bets that we could possibly have made. So we're definitely gonna be 0 and 11 going into the main event. So how are we going to get this done? How are we gonna make all of our money back in the main event considering we've done stuff like play Tuivasa by decision? With Felipe De Santos, like literally the only person playing this, even though he's only three to one, he's basically at twenty to one of people picking against him. Uh, Austin Lane fighting that narrative about that getting the eye poke revenge back in your home country, not to mention some of this other crap that we put in. I mean, you got to be kidding me. Um, Oberg's going to win a decision for real. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, main event. Let's take a look. So pretty, 
pretty easy uh, fight to figure out what the public is thinking because they've been analyzing this fight forever. Izzy Anasani is going to put on kind of a master class. He's going to outstrike him. And it's either going to be one of two things, either an Israel Adesanya kind of boring decision, or, you know, he could get that, that KO over, um, you know, like he did over, uh, over Pahaya. Okay. Um, so we really can't bet the Izzy side, right? The only thing we can really do is play the Strickland side. Um, and, all you're hearing, not all you're hearing, but most of what you're hearing is Strickland. Listen, he's, he's, a, he's a fun guy. He's really good at the press conference, but he really doesn't have a lot to offer. And the only way he really could get this win is if he, you know, if he wrestled, which you know he's not going to do. I have to say that a, a if, if I had it in me, which I don't, actually I might, I would do something like Strong, Sean Strickland by by submission. Just have him actually go for the takedown, okay, and and win by submission. But I think if he got the takedown, he if he did go for wrestling, he'd be so excited that he would just kind of just kind of hold the position and probably try to go for round and pound. So there's a couple of things I want to look at here. Let let's take a look at some of these Strickland win odds, um, because it's got to be something with him. First of all, Strickland by TKO at ten to one. That's pretty freaking amazing. If you want to know the truth, Strickland by decision plus twelve hundred. I have to say that between these two, Strickland by TKO or Strickland by decision, I think the Strickland by TKO is the one that's expected a little bit more, and it's not by much. But I don't think anybody believes Strickland can win a decision. But you know what? If, in fact, Strickland does go for wrestling, that, that's probably what's going to end up happening if he's successful with it. So we're going to do this. Strickland by decision to get all of our money back plus 180. Um, and that's going to do it. You know, again, we don't have our whole list here, so we I can't remember exactly what we did. Yeah, we played Jusette inside the distance. Obviously, there's no chance of winning. I mean, Crosby's the one that's going to be bringing all the heat. So, 0-1. Oh, uh, Gabriel Miranda, if he's going to win, it's certainly going to be the first round. There's no way he's going to win a decision. So, we have him by decision, 0-2. Oh, uh, Blood Diamond, the only reason he's here is because he's it is on, is, is his friend. So, he has no chance to actually beat Radke, considering that he's got this incredible style problem here. So, we have Blood Diamond. So, bang, 0-3. Oh, Nazareth Hasparas, nice low volume. Um, he's just going to win a decision. Anybody that bets him to finish is out of their mind. So, bang, 0-4. John, Jamie Malarkey, again, do, doesn't really have a lot of finishing upside. Um, uh, if any, maybe grinds him late. So, we played Malarkey, I think, in round two. Is that what we did? So, 0-5, oh, boom. Uh, Jose Mariscal, the only reason he won that last fight is because Trevor Peak is terrible. Jack Jenkins is so much more technical. Um and we're, we're suffering from recency bias. And we have plays Mariscal as a chump. So we're going to play him. And not only that, we're going to play him inside the distance. 0-6. Bang. Carlos Olberg, he's probably going to get him out of there in the first or second round. If anything, if he loses, you know, maybe Young gets him out of there. But there's no way Olberg wins decision here. So, bang. 0-7. We have him by decision. Tyson Pedro, he either wins round in round one or he fades. No way he wins the decision. So we played him by decision. Bang. 0-7. Justin Taffa, Austin Lane, Revenge, I poke, Austin Lane, you know, traveling to Justin Taffa's home country. That's ridiculous. Who can, who can play Austin Lane? Bang. 0 and 8. Manel Cop versus Felipe DeSantos. I mean, why, why should I be better than everybody else? I mean, you, have, you, you can pull 30 different experts. All 30 of them are picking Cop. And yet, DeSantos is only 3 to 1. I mean, it got to be a moron to, to, put, to play DeSantos. Oh, oh well, 0 and 9. Tai Tuivasa versus uh, uh, Alexander Volkov. I think that was actually 0 10. Tai Tuivasa versus Alexander Volkov. Again, Tai Tuivasa, you know, he, he, you know, if anything, he's going to get a KO. No way he wins the decision. So bang, 0 and 11. So 0 and 11, with any luck, Strickland does win by decision to get all of our money back. And that is how you're contrarian. And if you follow me, you play all these bets, probably going to lose but at least you're thinking about things in the right way.
And that's going to do it. Good luck, everybody.